Hey all my algae stars, today I have a treat for you and that is some never before seen footage of the one and only Baton superstar Mackenzie Rayburn. We all remember Mackenzie as one of the top three finalists in the spokesmodel competition. You guys didn't get to see her interview yet but that's okay because I have it here to show you guys today. I'm Mackenzie Raven from Fresno, California. Today I'm with my baton coach, Yolanda Stone. She's also a former world baton champion. First, tell me a little about how you got into baton twirling. Well, I started twirling at the age of six and I started in a baton class with a lot of little girls and from there just indulged in it, loved it, gravitated towards it. And um, I'm now 53 and it's been a part of my life ever since. I just love it. <laughs> what does it take to become a world champion? That one's a loaded question. Uh, to become a world champion, a lot of dedication, perseverance, sweat, tears, um, a lot of heart and a lot of passion because you've got to believe truly in yourself, as you know, in order to, to have those goals and to want to reach them because it does not happen overnight. It takes many years of good, solid training and a great coach too. <laughs> what would you say to people who say baton twirling is not a sport? I would say I would challenge them. You know, uh, here we have a sport that during our summer training, we practice anywhere from six to eight hours, and that's what I used to train, eight to 10 hours a day. Um, the travel time, mom and dad's sweat and tears, the money that goes behind it, the costuming, um, they're absolutely wrong. Um, the unfortunate thing is in the, city, in the United States, we still look at baton twirling as, an, as a majorette uh, event versus a true athletic sport. And as you know, at the world level, the Japanese, the Canadians, the Europeans do classify competitive baton twirling as a true athletic sport. So I'm hoping, McKinsey, in your lifetime, um, perhaps in the next few years that you do compete, and as time moves forward, that you will see it inducted as an, a true athletic sport here in the United States. And I'm hoping I see that in my lifetime too. So, What, what made you become a coach? I loved it. I love being with the kids. Um, the challenge of being creative with new routines, um, adapting to the children too with the different elements of skill level because it is so important to really understand and make sure that we you know, are able to communicate on those those elements of just those basic twirls as you remember and being able to explain it. I, I love children and, and again it goes back to the, one of those first questions. I love this sport. I've been in it for so so very long. So. What did you think of me when I first started twirling? Oh, yeah, you're so cute. I've seen these pictures of Mackenzie through memories of on Facebook and whatnot. I thought she was very, very determined. She had a will about her and an expectation and a real good sense of wanting it. And here we are, um, a champion at heart. But I thought she was always very capable of, of reaching her goals. And a lot of it comes too with the family unit of mom and dad and, and uh, grandma. Grandma travels to all the competitions along with mom and, and daughter. So at the end of the day, I, I always knew she would be a champion. I always knew we'd be standing here. <laughs> Did you ever think I would become a state and regional champion? Always. Going back to the question right before, absolutely yes. I never doubted her. Never <laughs> doubted her. Regarding costumes, what do you think makes a good costume? What do you look for in a costume for your athletes? What makes a good costume? Uh, the the uh, seamstress is number one, the material is number two, the trimming element number three, and how it's brought together. The creativity, the work that is involved, um, there are so many elements that come with a costume. So all that really kind of feeds and, and comes forth with full circle. So, you know, making sure that, um, you know, here we go back to the creativity and the designer of the costume. Um, those are the kind of things I look for and something that's gonna last on and on and through and through every type of event. Um, and as you know, we can be in a costume eight to 10 hours in a day. So it's gotta be able to withstand the force of nature of what we do on the floor. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me and all of the algae fans out there. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I know I did, and I can't wait to be seeing more of Miss Mackenzie Rayburn in the future. So until next time, algae stars, talk to you guys later.